What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn about S-MIME and how to sign emails using certificates so that the recipient knows it's actually you who is sending the email. So let us get right into it. All right, so what we're going to do in this video today is we're going to create our own self-signed certificate, which we're going to use to sign emails so that the recipients know that they're actually coming from us and that they're actually authentic. And the way this works is we're going to first create a private key that only we have, that only we know, that we don't share with anyone. And based on that private key, we're going to then create a certificate. And the only way to sign an email using that certificate is to also have the private key. You cannot sign an email with just a certificate, you also need to have the respective private key, which means that if you keep the secret and if you keep the safe, uh, when someone receives an email that is signed with that particular certificate, they know it's coming from you because you're the only person that has this private key. That's the basic idea of this. Now, one thing that's important here to mention is that when you use a self-signed certificate, it is usually not trusted by default uh, by email clients, by the system in general, when you use a self-signed certificate, um, applications are going to display usually that it's uh, not valid, that it's not safe because it's basically signed and issued by no one, by yourself. So what you would do in a production environment is you would go to a trusted CA, so certificate authority, you would usually pay money to get a certificate that is then trusted by default by application like Thunderbird, for example. Uh, but for a testing, playing around environment, this is perfectly fine. The process is the same. At the end of the day, you get a private key, you get a certificate, and then the process of using those to sign an email is the same. Uh, the difference is just if you generate them and sign them yourself, or if you use a trusted CA, which is the recommended way if you're doing this in production. So let us get right into it. We're going to start by using, I'm going to use the Windows subsystem for Linux. You can also just use um, the ordinary command line on Windows but we're going to use open SSL to do that. So you can install it on Windows by just downloading it from the official website. You can also install it, I think, using Choco. So Choco install open SSL, or um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it here in the Windows subsystem for Linux on Ubuntu, just because that's the environment I'm more comfortable with. I'm going to navigate here to programming, neural nine, Python, and current, which is my working directory. And in here, I'm going to create now a new uh, directory, which I'm going to call certs for certificates. I'm going to navigate into it. And here now I'm going to first create the private key. How do I do that? I'm going to generate an RSA key by saying open SSL. By the way, if you don't have open SSL installed on your window, uh, on your subsystem, what you do is you, you say sudo apt install open SSL, at least on Ubuntu, this is going to then install open SSL. And then we're going to say open SSL gen RSA. So generate RSA dash out. We're going to call this private underscore key dot P E M. And we're going to say 2048 bytes. So then we have this key here based on this key. Now we're going to create a so-called certificate signing request CSR. So we're going to say open SSL rec dash new dash key, we're going to provide the private key. And we're going to then say dash out csr.pem, for example. Now, here we can enter some information that is then going to be visible in the certificate. So when you get an email that is signed with a certificate, you can see, for example, that the country is, uh, in my case, it will be Austria, it's from the company neural nine, it's from uh, the state, whatever, Vienna, for example. So I'm going to just provide some basic information here, AT for Austria, Vienna for Vienna, Vienna for the city here, organization name, neural nine, then I'm going to skip. Um, actually, let me just restart this because we need to enter an email. So I'm going to restart this AT, Vienna, Vienna, neural nine. Uh, then I'm going to provide an email address, which is the email address I'm going to use this certificate for. Uh, I created a test mail for this video, which uh, I think I called neural test at web.de. It's a German provider. Uh, I'm not going to add a password here. And once this is done, we have this request here. So the certificate signing request and now to actually sign the certificate with the private key, what we're going to do is we're going to say open SSL x509, which is the format, 
dash request or dash rec dash in, which is going to be the request here, dash sign key, which is going to be our private key, dash out, which is going to be the certificate dot PEM. And then we're going to provide days where we want this certificate to be valid for 365 days for one year. So this is now the certificate. We have it here. We have the certificate.pem file. We have the private key and the certificate. You don't have to keep this private. This can be publicly available. People should know that this is your certificate. But the only way again to sign an email is to use that certificate and the private key. No one can sign an email if they don't have the private key. That's very important. So now we can get into the Python code to actually sign an email. Uh, of course, you can also do this in your graphical user interface email application. But since this is a programming channel, we're going to do this in Python. What we're going to do for this is we're going to open up the command line. I actually have one open up here. So I'm going to just use CMD to install the Python module called Python dash S mail. So this is going to allow us to sign emails. In my case, I already have this installed. So I'm going to go into PyCharm and we're going to import first of all the core Python package SMTP lip. This is the I think it stands for simple mail transfer protocol, basically just transferring emails, a protocol for this. Then we're going to also import from the core Python module email dot mime dot text. And I think uh, I wrote this down actually. MIME stands for multi purpose internet mail extensions, and S MIME stands for secure MIME essentially. Um, so, from email MIME text, we want to import the class MIME text from email.mime.multipart. We want to import MIME multipart. And uh, then we also want to say from S mail which is Python as mail from this package, we want to import sign message. Now, first of all, if you want to connect to your email, I have, uh, I think three videos on my channel where I show you how to connect to your email using IMAP or using SMTP, we're going to need SMTP since we're uh, sending something, we're not trying to load um, emails from our inbox, we're trying to send something. So we need to have the SMTP server and connecting to your email account uh, depends or how, how you do that exactly depends on your provider. So usually you can just type the name of your provider into Google together with uh, something like SMTP server, and you will find a server, you will find a port and the necessary settings. So in my case, the SMTP underscore server, this is a constant I'm going to define here is going to be smtp.web.de. As I said, this is a German uh, mail provider. And I'm going to use this here because I have a test mail. And then you will also need the login information and chances are you also have to uh, change some settings in your account so that you're actually able to connect uh, directly to the server. Um, but I cannot make a tutorial on this because this is different for every provider. This is different for Gmail, different for web.de, different for uh, Yahoo and so on and so forth. So you need to Google the specific settings. Um, however, you will need the credentials. You will need the email and the password. In my case, I have them stored in a file. The structure of the file is quite simple. I have one line where I have the email neural test at web.de. And in the second line, I have my password like this. And this is the file login info that I have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say login mail and login pass is going to be equal to open login info in reading mode, read the content, split it on line breaks so that we get the two separate lines stored into mail and pass. Um, so the server is that and the port that I have to use, I think this is the default port for um, star TLS start TLS uh, 487 uh, is the port. And then we also need the path to our certificate into the private key. So I'm going to just say here, cert underscore file is going to be cert slash certificate dot pem and then the private key. So actually the key file is going to be private key dot PEM. All right, so those are the constants. And then we also need we're going to send this email now to myself. So I'm going to say the recipient of this email is going to be accounts as 
uh, at neural9.com. So this is just uh, one of the many emails. This is just a trash email that I use to, you know, log into services that I just try or that I just uh, want to create a quick account for. So nothing important. I'm going to just send an email here. Um, and then I'm going to define a message. So I'm going to say message is equal to hello. This email will be signed. Hope you are excited. There you go. That's going to be the message. And then we're going to just create the message object. So we're going to say the actual message. So the actual email message will be equal to my multipart. We're going to provide related. I'm going to say message dot attach a mime text we want to attach the message in plain format. So not HTML or something like that. The character set is going to be UTF eight. Uh, and then we're going to set the basic fields like message subject will be equal to my signed message, for example, then message from is going to be equal to our login mail. And message two will be our recipient. Um, and then all we need to do here now is we need to sign that email. This is done very easily with this S mail library. Otherwise, we would have to do a lot of stuff manually. All we have to do to sign this message now is we need to say signed message is going to be equal to sign message, sign message. Um, and the first thing we pass here is the message itself. The second thing is the private key. So the key file. And the third thing is the certificate. So the cert file. And now in order to send all of this, all we need to do is we need to connect to the SMTP server, we need to do the whole encryption TLS stuff, and then we just need to send the email. So with uh, SMTP lib dot SMTP, we're going to connect to the SMTP server on the SMTP port. Uh, as server, let's say, and then we're going to say server dot E H L O. I don't know exactly what this stands for. Uh, this is just a simple, I think some hello command or something to connect. Uh, but then we're going to say start TLS. We're going to add another one of those ELO messages, E H L O messages. Um, and then we're going to say server dot login, and we're going to provide the login mail the login password. And then we're going to say server dot sent message. And all we want to do is we want to send the signed message. And provided this provided that this worked out, we're going to print email was sent successfully, because otherwise we're going to get an exception an error, and we're not going to get to that point. So let's briefly recap, we load the login information, we specify the server that you can Google for your specific provider, we specify the port, which you can also Google for your specific provider, we load the certificate file and the key file. Uh, I mean, here, we just provide the uh, path, it's actually loaded by the sign message function, we provide the recipient, we provide the message, we create this message object where we have uh, the text, the subject from two and so on. Then we sign this message using the key and using the certificate, we connect to the server, we initiate, uh, initiate TLS, we log in, we send the message, that's it, nothing too complicated. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this. Um, this will then send the email and then I'm going to show you here, I will have to censor some things here because I don't want you to read all of my emails. All right, so here I uh, got this email, my signed message. Hello, this email will be signed. And when I look at this here in the upper right corner, you can see S mime, I can click on it. You can see here, it says digital signature is not valid, because you can see this certificate was issued by nobody, it was signed by nobody. Uh, but we can actually see the certificate, we can see here AT Vienna, Vienna, neural nine neural test at web DE. Um, and some stuff, uh, some information about this. Of course, Thunderbird is not trusting this certificate because or the signature because it was not issued by a trusted CA by a trusted certificate authority. Uh, the process is the same when you use a trusted CA, you just get the files from there, they're then signed and issued by them. So you have the certificate that's actually trusted. And uh, the process in Python is the same, you just use the key, you just use the certificate and you sign your emails. But this is how you securely 
sign emails uh, using SMIME, using a private key, using a certificate in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.